In this video, let's see how can we create an interactive calendar in Excel that can automatically update whenever we change the month or the year. So as we can notice, this calendar always going to highlight the today's day with this greenish color or with the color that you like the most because it's fully customizable. And also the days that are not from the specified month, such as July of 2024, for example, are going to be highlighted with this grayish color. So let's take a look on how can we create this fully customizable calendar in Excel to help us on a daily basis. And remember, it's very easy to create. As we can notice right here, I'm only using some simple calculations, some simple formulas and a couple of helper columns to help me with the lists that I have, such as the list of the months and also the first day of the month and the last day of the month and the day of the week and so forth. So step by step from scratch, let's see how can we do it. But before we get started, here to the right, I have just a sample of a calendar just to be used as a example, as a reference. But anyway, let's go now here to the right and maybe I can start with the cell B3 and here I can start with the days of the week, such as Sunday, or we can abbreviate the Sunday to Sam and so forth. However, I don't want to manually input all the days of the week. So what I can do is I can click on the cell where I have the Sam and uh, in the at the bottom right corner, I can click hold and drag to the right because the way Excel can continue to create the sequence for me uh, here. OK, so Sunday through throughout uh, all the, the, the days of the week until Saturday. Now let me select all those columns and then I can right click and go to column width. Instead of using a large column width, maybe I can decrease the value to four and then OK. Now it's much better. Other things that I can do is let me select maybe here the three cells above the header or the days of the week and then I can go to merge and center. In this cell right here, I want to input the day, the month, for example, January, February, March, and so forth. But again, I don't want to manually input the month. So I can go here to a column and create a sequence, a list of the months that I have, such as January, enter, and now February, March, April, and so on. However, Excel can create the sequence for me. So let me, at the bottom right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down until December. Okay, as we can notice in the little tag, December. Yeah, that's it. Let me increase a little bit the size of the column. And another thing that is very important here is we're not going to use right now this uh, column. However, we're going to use it later. January is the first month of the year. February is the second one. March is the third one and so forth. So let me select those numbers. Click, hold and drag down because that way Excel can continue to create the sequence. I can also decrease the size or the width of this column. And now in the next column, we can do something similar, however, to you to be used as the years. So let's say the first year that I want to have in my calendar is 2020. I don't think it's necessary to have a year before 2020 because I don't want to use. So this is why I'm starting in 2020 and then enter. This is just a list. OK, and let me click hold and drag down. And let's click in this little tag and go to view series. Okay, 2020, 21, 22, 23, and so forth. Now, all the lists that we need are already done. So we can go back here to the calendar. Let's click in the cell above. And then I can go to data. And here to the right, I can go to data validation and choose instead of allow any value. Instead, I can go to list. And as the source, I can click in this up arrow and select all the months that I have in this list. Click in the down arrow and then OK. Our first list is already done. Now, instead of manually input the name of the month, I can easily select the month itself. It's very, it's much easier. Now, let's do something similar here. Select two cells or three or four, doesn't matter. Let's stick with a number of cells, merge everything together. And again, data, data validation and create another list but this time for the ears. Let me select here the ears and then I can click in this now arrow and then OK. Now I have both 
of the most important informations of the calendar, the month and the year. And from the month and from the year, those two different criteria, I can automatically update my calendar. So talking about now the calendar itself, let's do the calendar. But before we do it, let me select the header. Let me go to the home tab, vertically and horizontally ally in the middle, put everything in bold, everything with a white color as the font. And as the background, maybe we can choose a darker color, such as a this gray, darker gray. I can do the same thing for the, the headers. Let me select everything here and I put borders just to make a different layout. Yeah, that's it. And uh, we can also select a couple of cells, maybe like this. If we notice in this calendar that I have, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different rows or six different lines. So maybe we can do the same thing right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. However, if you want to select more rows, it doesn't matter. You can do so, okay? But I want to stick with only six different rows. And let me put borders and also ally vertically and horizontally everything. Now we can go here and let's say July of 2024. As we can notice here to, to the right, I have the same calendar as I'm building july of 2024 and i know that the first day of july of 2024 is uh on monday but how can i do it in the calendar how can i create this calculation to always retrieve the correct position of the days of the week based on the first day of the month for example before we do it uh, i think it's very important to always have the first day of the month and the last day of the month so let's say july 1st of 2024 this is the first day of July. And what is the last day of July? The last day, I don't know, maybe is 7, 31st or 30. I don't even know. So what I can do is equal sign EO month. This function in Excel can always return the last day of the month. So let me double click in this function, one, two. And the start date is going to be the date above, that is based on those two criteria that I have, comma, what is the number of months that I want to add to the date above? Zero, because I don't want to add any other month. I just want to know what is the last day of the month above. So that's it. Let me hit enter. I have here the result in a serial number format, but I can change here in the home tab. Instead of using general, I can go to chart date. And that's it. So 31st of July is the last day of July. And if I change, instead of using here July, maybe I can use February. Let's see if it's going to work. Enter. Okay, so February of 2024, the last day is February 29 of 2024. But uh, something that we need to do is, let's say I'm not using July anymore, but uh, August. As we can notice, the date here is not going to change. So how can I automatically change the date based on those criteria that I have, the month and also the year. I can do this the following thing. Let me get rid of the cell and then equal sign, let's use a function. That is the date function. One, two, to select. And as the date function, we have only three arguments, the year, the month, and the day. The day is always going to be the number one, the first day of the month. However, the month and the year needs to be based on the criteria that we have to the left. So let's start with the year. And it's very simple because I just need to select the cell itself, the criteria, and then comma. Now the month is a problem because we need to input here a number. But August, for example, is not a number. It's a text. But if we go here to the list, we can use maybe a VLOOKUP function or a XLOOKUP function too. Based on our lookup value, such as August, we can retrieve the corresponding uh, number, such as 8, or January is equal to 1, April is equal to 4, and so on. So let me use here the VLOOKUP function. Double click, one, two. The lookup value is going to be the cell that I have to the left, comma. The table array is going to be the months and also the numbers to the right, comma. The column index number is going to be the number two because it's the second column where I have the results that I want to bring back, comma, 
and I want to use a exact match. Double click, one, two, close parentheses, comma, and finally, the last argument is the day. So one, the first day of the month. Let me close parentheses and then I can hit enter. Okay, as we can notice, now whenever I change both the year or here the month, as we can see, the results are going to be automatically updated for us. The last thing that is missing here to go to the calendar itself is, as we can see throughout this calendar right here, I have as the first day of uh, July of 2024 uh, is uh, on Monday, right? It's not Sunday, but Monday, but it could also be Wednesday or Friday or so forth. And to know what is the first day of the month in a week, so let's say Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or so forth, we can use here a formula that is the equal sign weekday, weekday to retrieve a number from one to seven to identify the day of the week of a date. So let me double click one, two, and the zero one number that I want to use is the first date, trauma, and I want to use as the criteria from Sunday to Saturday, as we have here in the calendar. Double click one, two, and then enter. Okay, so two. And what this means is Sunday is the first column, so it's equal to one. Monday is the second column, so two, Tuesday, three, Wednesday, four, and so forth. As we have the number two, it's because the first day of July of 2024, it starts right here on Monday. And if I change, instead of using July, I go to August. Now I have five. And what this means is five is equal to Thursday. So Thursday is equal to the first day of August of 2024. And we can also see that it's true based on this calendar right here. So one, is equal to Thursday, right? So it's working. But now how can I transform this calculation right here into the calendar? It's very simple. Let me go here to the first cell that I have in the calendar and then equal sign. This cell is going to be equal to the first day of the month that I have based on my criteria. However, it's not correct. So what I need to do is the first cell minus this number five right here plus the number one. And then I can hit enter. I'm going to have as a result a bunch of uh, hash signs, but I can change the format and use a different one, but we can do it later. However, if I stick with or hover with my cursor over the cell, I can see August 28th of 2024. And if I go to the next cell, equal sign, the previous one, add to the number one and then enter, I'm going to have a sequence. Let me bring this formula, this calculation to the right. And as we can know, let's go back to July, Monday, look here, July 1st of 2024, exactly the first day that we have right here. So it's working. And if I change to August, as we did see before, uh, Tuesday or Thursday, sorry, Thursday is equal to the first day of the August 24. So it's working perfectly. Now let me go here to the cell, to the row underneath, equal sign, the... The, the last cell that I have in the in the first row, add to the number one, enter. And the cell underneath, equal sign, the previous one, add to one. Now let me select both of those cells, click, hold, and drag down. And also select the second column, click, hold, and drag to the right. Now we're done. The only thing that we can do here to change this hash signs is selecting everything and then go to the home tab, date, and then more numbers format. Instead of using a complete date that we have right here, we can go to custom and maybe in the type, I can get rid of everything and use a double D, 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 because that way we can have a number itself, only the day of the month, not the year, not the month, but just the day. And then let me click OK. Now we have something similar as a standard calendar, as we can notice right here to the right, only the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. Uh, here we have the same thing. Now we can create some conditional formatting to help us better visualize this calendar. So let's say July of 2024 is uh, July 1st of 2024 is my two days date. So I need to highlight this, the two days date that is equal to the number one right here. And to do it is very, very easy. So let me select everything and then go to the home tab, conditional formatting, highlight cells, rules, 
equal to. And I want to highlight the cell that is equal to the today's date. And if I open this spreadsheet tomorrow or next week, next month, next year, I always want to highlight the today's date. Not exactly the today's date, but the current date. Okay? So equal sign within this formula bar, equal sign to day. Open and close parentheses. As we can notice, it's already working. But instead of using this red color, I want to use a green one. And then okay. Other things that I can do is I can highlight with a gray color all the dates that uh, is not part of July of 2024. Everything that is after and before. So let me go here to conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, less than. And all the dates that are less than the first uh, day of the, the month, I want to highlight with a custom format, maybe using a gray color. In, and as the font, um, uh, maybe I can let the, the standard one, okay? And okay again. Now we can go again to conditional formatting and do something similar, highlight sales rules, but this time everything that is greater than the last day of the month. And I want to highlight with a custom format using the same background as before. Okay, and okay again. So we're done. This is how we can create a calendar in Excel. And the last thing, maybe you can go to view tab and get rid of the grid lines. Because that way you can have a more clean look to your calendar. And whenever we change the month to another one, as you can notice, the calendar is going to be automatically updated and it's going to perfectly work. And if we also change here the year to other years, it's also going to automatically update the calendar. So this is how we can create a fully customizable calendar in Excel. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or any suggestions, to the next videos let me know comment down below and i see you tomorrow because every day has a new video so i see you there